Hey folks, I reloaded specifically to start the creepy music over, and it didn't. <laughs> I just presumed it was going to be a standard, oh, I entered a new area, therefore the music is new too. But it picked up pretty much where I left it. Alright. Detective. Are you really paying more attention to the background music than to our real case endeavors? Kim, first of all, yes. And secondly, can you not point it out? We're kind of leaning on the fourth wall heavily as it is. All right. Pull them open. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back covered in dozens of scary little Seminese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! Escapes from Plaisance. As she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. You knew it was happening. Alright, let's take away logic for a second. Why? Because of reasons. Oh my gosh, minus five authority. Ugh. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. No sane person would ever put their head into such a machine. And over here, what about David Bowie? A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. See, I told you. Looks like Guillaume de Mion. That hair poster. Alright, hang on. No, not yet. Not yet. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Seminese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. We get more points on that for breaking into the commune art appointment, or apartment? All right. Knock on the door. Only an echo. No one is there. A hollowed out dark echo. So I figure that this is probably the alternate way to get in here. If you can't pass the intelligence and psyche tests to get her to give you the key, that way you're not still locked out of content. This would be the uh, physical slash motorics, 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 Mo motor skills way of getting in. Guess what? We're going to do it anyway for uh, my own entertainment. Guess what? We're gonna... Oh! <laughs> Ow, shoot! Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that hurt? This really wasn't the best idea, was it? Are you all right? The lieutenant steps closer, his eyes soft and worried. This looked pretty intense and painful, I must admit. What is going on there? An upset, high-pitched voice calls out from the bookstore. Are you really trying to break down the back door? I warn you! Don't tempt the spirits, officer! Don't tempt the spirits or you'll damage the holy wards on the door! It barely looks like you've done any damage to the door, however. It's still locked and closed, covered in dozens of little charms and trinkets. Yeah, well, we have a key. We don't need to sit around and do that. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Do you feel the tiny hair on the back of your neck rise up? As if someone's standing right behind you. I'm right behind you, officer. Kim, don't do that. An uneasy knot forms in the pit of your stomach. Touch the back of your neck. What is this feeling? 
Outside, the wind howls in from across the bay. The building at Rue de saint Gaslan stands like a matchbox on its side, with men inside like little wooden sticks ready to catch fire. A panicking woman squeezes the pendant around her neck until it leaves a mark inside her palm. A man, just a few meters away, stands frozen with a key in his hand. Somewhere inside, a spider is spinning its web. Open the door. I know what this is going to be, but we're going to ask Kim anyway. Yes? Kim? Oh. Oh! Thought complete. Finger pistol. Nine millimeter. Snap, snap, baby! Turns out guns aren't that much for protecting people as they are for attacking people. If you want to protect people, really work for them, you have to whip out your signature dual 9mm Villiers finger pistols. Who needs a real gun anyway? That conversation you just had? It would have gone better had you snapped these bad boys at them. No, 9mm dual finger pistols do not count for an actual weapon in a gunfight. Do not taunt, happy fun ball. Plus one reaction speed, the safety's always off. Empty hand slots give suggestion plus one. Excellent. Now, Kim? Kim? Fine. I thought the game was going to chide me into doing this. I suppose not. Uh, what am I not doing? Folks, we'll be right back. All right, you know what? We're keeping that attempt because it's proof uh, that as much as I love this game, it's not entirely perfect. So do you remember when I told you about when I had a thought cabinet thought pop up in the middle of a cutscene before? I'm pretty sure that's what happened there inside that next door. So we're going to do things in a slightly different order, and that should be what lets us get through. Pull the curtains open. They're loud. Plasson says, oh! Yes, yes. David Bowie. All right. Now... Oh, I know. I can read a case note. That would be okay. Oh, that's something to do. A gleaming chewing gum wrapper found in the pocket of a laborer jeans. It gives off some ever-so-faint scent of apricots. Your mouth starts watering. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet or some ancient temple. Ancient temple? Yeah, from the height of antiquity, a long, long time ago, millennia ago. On an island of time you can never return to. The end of summer. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns into liquid gold. For a moment, the world store of precious metal seems to increase dramatically and you are rich. There's movement next to you. The shuffle of a small coat, warm, like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. Where did it go? Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Come back! Take a deep breath. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger like a glow with Every breath you take. 
Whatever petrochemical byproducts they have used to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper, or is that just your memory filling in the gaps? Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts in behind your closed eyes. Made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive, didn't you? Feels so familiar. A white envelope with a stamp attached to the upper right corner, handed to you by Everett Clare. We've already read this. Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. Hmm. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... I'm wearing all my logic gear. I could stand to smoke. Ah, there we go. Thought complete. Hey, did you know that thoughts that come up in the middle of transitions can absolutely wreck what's going to happen in your game? Now you do. All right. Let's have a little more fizz in. And knock. And... Oh, it's pain threshold. That's why. Is that also pain? No. I don't think I have any pain threshold here. No, it's all fizz in. Meh. Alright, this won't be exactly a repeat. Oh, it still hurts. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the doorframe. It's going to take one more try to break through. Break on through to the other side, but you've done it. The lieutenant stares at you as you... Stand there, silent and brooding. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? Smash into the door and... Oh! <laughs> I read them both as fuck it hurts and not fuck the system. We know there's no one there. Nah, just do it. <laughs> hey, look, it worked. What is this place? I think this may be the Armateps Boxing Club for young athletes. I think you're right. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now, let's move on, shall we? Fair enough. Uh, yeah, we're good with that for now. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Yes, it is. We're not, we're not going there yet. Oh! La boue. Smells like leather and sweat. Shot put ball. It's not exactly a boo. It'll do. 
a ball used for playing shot put. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such a beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. Why? The poster says, Sitius Fortis. The rest is worn off. Pegboard. Well, not that kind of pegboard, but worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. Hmm, kettlebell. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off of its weight plates. Oh, it's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on this barbell. That is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Why does my head hurt? Is it familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it, then. What kind of a bastard would just remove the collars? That should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Physical instrument? I can do that. I want to do that. I am wearing fallen gloves. Oh yeah, those are legitimately the right gloves for this, aren't they? Physical instrument. I think the other physical instrument I have is a shirt as well. Yeah. Fifty-eight? Eh. Check it out, Kim. Look at this jerk do a clean and jerk. Conjuring up an inhuman amount of strength, you raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. I'm a true champion. And then the things pop right back in our hands. A warm wave of accomplishment washes over your head as you drop the barbell to the floor. For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. Hey, but you're still in a ghost house. What if somebody heard this? What if they know you're here? Good technique. The lieutenant nods with approval. That's all I needed. Kim's approval. Okay. All right. Onward and upward. Oh, hello. Oh, gosh. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Hmm. I love incidental music like this. Whoa. Good spot for a sting. Very taxidermish. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Hey Kim. Yes, detective? Would you say that the opposite of formalde uh, formaldehyde is casual de Jekyll? Eh? Eh? Alright. Airship rotors. Covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Oh. 
guess. A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow co color. Is it from The Simpsons? But where are the clothes it used to display? How about the cabinet? Yes. How about the cabinet? Oh. Uh, quick check. Should I be getting cans out of here? I don't know. Maybe. Oh! Hello! Uh, I should... This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keybird... Keybird. Birds on the brain. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. What he means is these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? Specifically, this is the Hrame Civic radio computer, model RC5120, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a REM RAIM compatible printer. Do you think I should turn it on? I'm ask I, I don't know why I'm asking you, because I'm gonna. We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. All right. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber. <laughs> I forgot this kind of reminds me of uh, the THX logo firing up. Revealing virescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left tangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Play. Nothing. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Play again. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. I have a 12-second memory. Nothing happens when I press print, either. Oh, boy. Um, okay. I need to respec. <laughs> we might have to go back out for more uh, Nozafed. Uh, clothing. I'm wearing visual calc. I want to go back to logic. Keep the rhetoric. That's encyclopedia. Yeah, we're good. One thing at a time. Scribbled across a notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. My goodness. We've got a lot of things to read in here. We've got a lot of things to kick around, too. Blue velvet. Soft to the touch. Moth bit. Is this Emma Zatalia? Might be. How about this desk? Ooh. Have we paid for today yet? I don't remember. I think we did. Means we can get that boombox, doesn't it? Skis with slipstream printed onto the laminated top layer. Steel rotor blades featuring a slipstream logo. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and the rotor blades both bear the, sli the same slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. Hmm. What a strange leap of imagination. And yet they still failed. How sad. Reality? is ruthless. 
And down here, a production schedule. That's exciting. All right. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. All right, drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You can make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Oh, it's the melting remnant. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin. Uh, sea pigs? And even aether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different. Examine this welkin. It is Vah Varahamira, a high welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a welkin supremacist. The note says all non-welkin races will be purged. The holder, the dwarf, the humans, and even the headless men. All of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with welkin. Green welkin, dread welkin, and the high welkin to rule them all. The lieutenant can't help but comment. An inordinate time, amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Hmm. Political, com political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. The lieutenant nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. I used to do it for games. I used to do it just to do it. I didn't have a plan to run a game in that world or, or any other thing. I just did it because it was an outlet. I have not in a long time. Hmm. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. In fact, as concept art, it's even further not real. All right, that's been educational. Let's move on. Just look at this detail. So much effort. Photos? The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees groaning under the weight of the snow on their branches. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds and abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers by boreal dwarg yurts under the snow. Great mammoth like beasts of burden. Although dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much-needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as we're all becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Is that where the name came from? Huh. Schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Uh, minimi stands for mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Ah, uh, if they couldn't run, I guess they weren't particularly agile. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. I'm joking at like, you know, one person in my audience ever. Keep reading, what happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. 
The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness and concludes, it looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left of the chalkboard says, see the production schedule filament for details. How about the notes? The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out. We're all untethered and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, the biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. All right, it said look at the production schedule for more details. I guess we'll do exactly that. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? Oh no. It was already glowing and... Now it's making a sound? It's probably some alien sailite technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on Rue de saint -Gislain. This is East Insulindian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat, is this the production schedule? Are you a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Ivan. Now please repeat, is this the production schedule? The lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. I want to say that. I know it's not helpful. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, I'm sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island in the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bone, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Now please tell me of the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Ah, right. Thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder, Fortress Accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we're not doing that. Unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? The voice of the machine asks again. She sounds cold in the damp air. I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Is it my birthday? Still no. All right, I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Oh, don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress Accident, is there something else I can do for you today? 
Why'd you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not so bad. So conceptual. Hmm. And what's that, this interactive call-on radio game? Well, you see... And any other questions? Nope. Thank you, and goodbye. I actually meant to have, uh, I just used my empty water cup for that. I meant to have a different prop with me. If I remember, by the next time I have to talk to somebody on a radio, I'm going to use it, and it's going to be mildly entertaining. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Remove the production schedule. And we're done here. All right, what's this? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker, the mesh spreading over the scone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Kedron mosaic tiles, very pizzantic. How do I know what those are supposed to look like? History class? Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles look beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, 123.7, 0.9, some written notes too. Sparse and cryptic. For radio frequencies, but for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and caterpillars. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here? Yes, I know it said capillaries. Don't look at me like that. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station at once? Looks like a surveillance program. They must have had massive air width. Air width instead of bandwidth? Ha. Huh. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under these stations suggests people across six Isolas would have been playing. Mundi, Insulinde, Gatla, Grad, Samara, even Ilmara. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. The lieutenant leans closer, his finger tracking the maddening rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Yeah, the cost of air with the loan must have been huge. Exactly. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained fingers clean against his jacket. This schedule. I know doom when I see it. This company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just some lines on marble and echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Kim wants to talk about that. I probably will. Uh... This must be an elaborate piece of art. Same thing. Okay. I thought there was going to be something else. Alright. Yes, Kim? Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's... I haven't seemed to make the conceptual leap to tie it all together, thanks, Detective. Um, it's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Or do we want to believe in the curse? No. Yes, 
That is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. How are they planning to do that? Rogue call-in stations. Hmm. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game. As long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories. Function as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He is a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Has anybody ever done this before, Kim? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Koenigstein, you know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter isolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. These Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing gamers, they love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Queer Al board game with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the shockboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious. And untethered from reality. But... Hmm. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish this. <laughs> it's too late for that, I'm afraid. He says, looking around the derelict room. The pipes howl when a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. It's interesting that this is what you care about, ma'am. Did I do everything else in here? I think I did. I did the slipstream. Yeah. And there was nothing left to do in Taxi Town. Taxi Town? Taxi Dermy Town. Or is it? Oh. Oh. Uh... All right. Let's go here first. One thing at a time. Pooh boy. Ah, magnesium. You know, the thing I haven't... <laughs> it heals morale, the thing I haven't been abusing. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face. That's the face of agony. Kim, is this a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No sign of any recent fire, only dead rats. Kick it. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Your toe hurts. You don't understand, okay? Physical objects deserve it. Look inside. It's dark and grimy here. You may be eaten by a Gru. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above, a voice, or several voices, talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. The echo is so prominent, though, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's even producing them. What are you doing? Lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. With a white jacket on! Don't do that! I'm not sure, Kim, but... I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, 
Really? He looks up to the ceiling. We should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Yeah, all right. I mean, at 97, it's it's hard not to do that, even without changing gear, you know? Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease, then... You've awakened the entity. Hello, are you there? Oh, this is the police. Who's there? You hear a low rumble upstairs, the sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Bent metal, broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Yeah, we'll be Ozymandias. Gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Kudos. That's it. And we will talk about that in the next video, folks. Later.